about a huge national effort to halt the growth of this virus, there will come a moment when no health service in the world could possibly cope because there won't be enough ventilators, enough intensive care beds, enough doctors and nurses. And as we've seen elsewhere in other countries that also have fantastic healthcare systems, that is the moment of real danger. To put it simply, if too many people become seriously unwell at one time, the NHS will be unable to handle it, meaning more people are likely to die, not just from coronavirus, but from other illnesses as well. So it's vital to slow the spread of the disease because that is the way we reduce the number of people needing hospital treatment at any one time, so we can protect the NHS's ability to cope and save more lives. And that's why we've been asking people to stay at home during this pandemic. And though huge numbers are complying, and I thank you all, the time has now come for us all to do more. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Because the critical thing we must do to stop the disease spreading between households. That is why people will only be allowed to leave their home for the following very limited purposes. Shopping for basic necessities as infrequently as possible. One form of exercise a day, for example, a run, walk or cycle alone or with members of your household. Any medical need to provide care or to help a vulnerable person and traveling to and from work, but only where this is absolutely necessary and cannot be done from home. That's all. These are the only reasons you should leave your home. You should not be meeting friends. If your friends ask you to meet, you should say no. You should not be meeting family members who do not live in your home. You should not be going shopping except for essentials like food, and medicine. And you should do this as little as you can. And use food delivery services where you can. If you don't follow the rules, the police will have the powers to enforce them, including through fines and dispersing gatherings. To ensure compliance with the government's instruction to stay at home, we will immediately Close all shops selling non-essential goods, including clothing and electronic stores and other premises, including libraries, playgrounds and outdoor gyms and places of worship. We'll stop all gatherings of more than two people in public, excluding people you live with. And we'll stop all social events, including weddings, baptisms and other ceremonies, but excluding funerals. Parks will remain open for exercise, but gatherings will be dispersed. No Prime Minister wants to enact measures like this. I know the damage that this disruption is doing and will do to people's lives, to their businesses and to their jobs. And that's why we produced a huge and unprecedented programme of support, both for workers and for business. And I can assure you, that we will keep these restrictions under constant review. We will look again in three weeks and relax them if the evidence shows we are able to. But at present, there are just no easy options. The way ahead is hard, and it is still true that many lives will sadly be lost. And yet it is also true that there is a clear way through. Day by day, we are strengthening our amazing NHS with 7,500 former clinicians now coming back to the service. With the time you buy, by simply staying at home, we are increasing our stocks of equipment. We are accelerating our search for treatments. We're pioneering work on a vaccine. And we are buying millions of testing kits that will enable us to turn the tide on this invisible killer. I want to thank everyone who is working flat out to beat the virus. Everyone from the supermarket staff to the transport workers to the carers, to the nurses and doctors on the front line. But in this fight, we can be in no doubt
that each and every one of us is directly enlisted. Each and every one of us is now obliged to join together to halt the spread of this disease, to protect our NHS and to save many, many thousands of lives. And I know that as they have in the past so many times, the people of this country will rise to that challenge and we will come through it stronger than ever. We will beat the coronavirus and we will beat it together. And therefore, I urge you at this moment of national emergency to stay at home, protect our NHS and save lives. Thank you. So I have to congratulate Boris Johnson on this speech. It's a very good speech. It was simple. The language was simple. It was to the point and he kept the slogans to a minimum. Um, so I think this is exactly what the British people needed to hear. It's an emulation of what's happening in other countries. He was serious. He wasn't messing about here. And um, I think this is what was uh, expected and what should have been delivered. The only downside is the timing, but it's better late than never. Now, I just want to go over some of the points that he made in the speech. So he talked about no healthcare in the world could cope with this virus. This is a bit of a U-turn on what he was saying recently, where he was talking about how the NHS is fully prepared, we're fully on board, we're ready to deal with this virus. And now he's preparing the ground for probably what's going to be a very difficult few weeks and months, because he knows that the NHS is not prepared. And instead of pumping it up as you know, there's nothing to worry about here. We're fully prepared for this. He knows that it's not. And he's, in a sense, preparing the public for a difficult way ahead. Now, he's talked about the ability of the NHS to cope. And it it really is true that it depends on the numbers that are coming in. And it depends on how the public react to this lockdown. It's a, it's a reality check for, for the public. Up until this stage, Many people were taking it easy. They didn't really take it seriously at all. And now Boris Johnson is ramming home this message. This is reality. We need to deal with this. Otherwise, the NHS is not going to survive. So he talked about how individuals and citizens themselves have a role to play here. So he said, all of us can do more. So he introduced the idea of household transfer. The idea that it's possible for you to be infected within your family and not show any symptoms, but many in many cases you transfer it to other people within your community. And it's important that if you go out and about, that you stay within your family group, that you maintain a lockdown in a sense within the family. And I think this was very important and it's a very good idea. It transmits in a simple way a very important concept. Um, and also, I think was important was how he talked about, you know, if your friends ask you to come out, just say no. I think it was important to reinforce that point. It's very important that people remember, yes, you'll receive some peer pressure. You'll receive messages from families, from family members, from friends saying, come on, it's just, just a few of us. You have to take personal responsibility. You have to be a responsible citizen and say no. And I think it's important that he reinforced that point. Now, it's important also to follow up with the consequences of not following this advice by issuing fines and dispersing groups of people using the police. So the police are going to be there. They're going to hand out fines and they're going to disperse any groups that go against these orders. And I think it's important that people understand that. He repeated once again the way ahead is hard. It's going to be a hard road ahead. And I think that has been somewhat of a theme within this speech. This is going to be difficult. We have to work together. We have to pull together in order to defend the NHS and our society. So another way he reinforced the idea of citizens working together was he used the word enlisted. So each and every one of us will be directly enlisted. It's like we're members of the military now, we're soldiers fighting this virus. And I think this was a good analogy. Maybe people can criticize that use of language, but I think it's important that the language 
remain simple but direct and that everyone feels that they are working together to defeat this. I think he was attempting once again to invoke Winston Churchill here. A serious discussion with the public. We are in a war. We have to fight. We have to work together. And everyone, every citizen, is a soldier in this battle. So once again, on the whole, I think this was a very good speech. It was what was necessary. And I hope it resonates with people. I hope people in the UK work together now to defeat this virus. They have to. So your turn, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think of this speech. As always, your comments are much appreciated. Thanks.